This is problem number two on the practice final for Kim 1A. And the question is, a, excuse me, a 10 liter vessel contains one atmosphere of argon at 27 degrees Celsius. 20.0 grams of ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3. Uh, molecular weight is equal to 80 grams per mole, is placed in the container. The reaction is initiated, but 4.0 grams of the solid remain. Uh, the temperature of the mixture is returned to 27 degrees Celsius. Ignore the volume of the solid and assume the gases are ideal. And the reaction is, <coughs> excuse me, Two ammonium nitrates in the solid state are going to decompose to give me uh, nitrous oxide gas, N2O gas, plus two waters gas, H2O, in the gas phase. And question A is what is the percent yield? Question B is what is the total pressure? Question C is, what is the mole fraction of argon? And question D is, what is the partial pressure of nitrous oxide, of N2O? Okay. N2O, by the way, is laughing gas. That's the stuff that the dentists give you to make the shot a little less painful. Okay. To take your mind off that. And so, for part A. This is uh, 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 an interesting question because we can approach the percent yield here from a, a different point of view than we've approached percent yield before by taking into account that it's a simple decomposition reaction. So the four grams that remained were unreacted material and the rest of it went through the, and underwent the, need, uh, the decomposition to get nitrous oxide and water. And so that means there were 16 grams of material that were uh, that decomposed. And the total theoretical yield would be all 20 grams decomposed. And so that means that the percent yield is going to be equal to um, 16 grams over 20 grams times 100%. And 16 divided by 20, that simplifies to, um, this is divisible by 4, that's 4 over 5, 4 fifths equals And I put that in there just for fun. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be the way we normally would approach a percent yield, but uh, because this is a simple decomposition reaction, and we can assume that all the products are the product gases, and that the remaining solvent is unreacted starting material. Um, okay, so that's part A. Now, part B. What is the total pressure? Well. The total pressure is equal to the pressure of the argon, partial pressure of the argon generated, plus the pressure of the, uh, oh, I'll, just, I'll just call it gas, and gas would be all the gaseous products. And we already know what the pressure of argon is. The partial pressure of argon was one atmosphere at 27 degrees Celsius in that 10 liter vessel. So no argon got in or out. It's still there. It doesn't involve itself in any reactions, so the pressure of argon is one atmosphere. So uh, uh, that part's solved. We just have to determine the pressure of the gas. And uh, 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 the pressure of the gas, P gas, is going to be equal to N gas, R T over the volume. And so 
now all that remains to be what it is to solve for uh, uh, this problem. And so I'm going to need to know how many moles of gas there are. Okay. And N gas is going to be equal to, uh, let me see, there was 16 grams of material that underwent the reaction. So 16 grams. And I'll write that as uh, one, oh no, I'll just use 16. Mm, yeah, 16 grams of uh, NH4. Yeah, oh. And there is one mole of ammonium nitrate. It has to be ultra pure for this to actually work. If there's any chlorides, it's going to explode. We're assuming it's an ultra pure. And uh, uh, so one mole of ammonium nitrate for every, what is the molecular weight? We're given 80, uh, 8.0 times 10 to the 1 grams of ammonium nitrate. Now I know I avoided scientific notation there. Why was that? Well, <coughs> that was to make the first calculation easier. Because I can divide 16 by 8, it's pretty obvious the answer is going to be 2. Now, we need to look at the, but generally as a rule, what I would recommend is express everything in scientific notation. Even the simple ones, I would have been 1.6, and then 1.6 divided by 8 would have been, it would have been a little more awkward, it would have been 0.2, but that's not really good. Now, we need to look at the balanced reaction. And I have one, two, three moles of product gas. So there are three moles of gas for every two moles of ammonium nitrate. Again, we're all, uh, if, if it does come up, in this case, there was no way to simplify this, but don't. Always use the stoichiometric coefficients with the mole ratios. Do not reduce them. Don't try to simplify that because the, the probability that you can make a mistake goes up exponentially. And so now that's enough information to answer this first question. So I have 16 divided by 8, which is 2. And then that's times 1.5 or actually 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, so I have 3 divided by 10. So it's 0.3 equals 0 0.3 moles of gas. Okay, uh, so let's go through that one more time. 16 divided by 8 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, 3 divided by 10 is 0.3. So the, the, that part of the calculation should be pretty simple if you sit back and look at it. Now, uh, we can answer the moles for the, uh, the, the question about what the pressure of the gas is. It's going to be equal to, and now I'm going to use scientific notation across the board. I have 3.0 times 10 to the minus 1 moles. And I'm going to write R out in the same form. It's going to be 8.21 times 10 to the minus 2 liter atmospheres per mole per K. And then that uh, is times 300 K, which is 27 degrees Celsius is uh, uh, 3.0 times 10 squared, okay. 300 K. And now I have to uh, divide by the volume of the container, and it is a 10 liter container, so that would be 10 to the 1 liters. So we can keep all the characteristic terms and deal with those separate from the mantissa terms. And that will make the, 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 the calculation much greatly simplified the calculation. So, um, in the mantissa terms, I've got 3 times 
times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. So now on my scratch paper, I'll go over here and write, uh, I've got 8.21 times 9. That'd be 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 8 times 9 is 72. 73. 73.89. So it's going to be equal to 73.89. Times, and now I've got the characteristic terms I have to take into account. Well, 10 to the 2 times 10 to the minus 2, I add those, that's 10 to the 0, so that's 1, they cancel. And I have 10 to the minus 1 divided by 10 to the 1. So I subtract in this case, and that is times 10 to the minus 2, and the units all drop out. Kelvin cancels, uh, moles cancel, uh, uh, I've got liters canceling, so I'm left with something this many atmospheres. And that's equal to 0 0.7389 atmospheres. And so now we have pressure of the gas. Now P total is equal to the pressure of argon plus the pressure of the gas equals 1.0 atmospheres plus 0 0.7389 seven three eight nine atmospheres equals one point seven three eight nine atmospheres. And if we wanted to round off at this point we could go back and look at the initial problem and see what was my uh, how did I have overloaded which had the fewest sig figs. Um, I guess in this calculation, uh, we have 2.00. I'm restricted to two significant figures. Um, and so it would be 0.74 atmospheres if I wanted to, to or 1.7 atmospheres if I wanted to round off. But I would accept this. Leave this in perfectly acceptable answer. Now, the next question, part C, what is the mole fraction of argon? Um, this is something that would be very difficult to solve uh, uh, by any other method uh, uh, because uh, uh, the, the pressure of argon is equal to the mole fraction of argon times the total pressure. And so, uh, uh, now that makes it easy because now I can solve for the mole fraction of argon because I know the total pressure and I know the partial pressure of argon. So uh, uh, therefore, the uh, mole fraction of argon is simply the uh, uh, pressure of argon over the pressure of the, the total pressure. And that's equal to 1 atmosphere over 1.7. You can approximate and say it's around a half, but uh, this is good enough. Okay. Now, part D. What is the partial pressure of nitrous oxide? Well, here I'm going to deal with it in a little different form to simplify the answer and uh, you know, find the easiest little lying fruit available. And in this case, the uh, uh, pressure of nitrous oxide is going to be equal to the mole fraction. I'm going to use a mole fraction of prime of N2O times the pressure of the gas. So it's the mole fraction of argon, or, or, and mole fraction of the nitrous oxide as a part of the gaseous products, not the total pressure. So it's only that, so that's why I use the prime of the mole fraction there, because I can easily find the mole fraction. Of, of, of the argon, uh, I mean of the nitrous oxide, as long as I ignore the argon, which I can do without any 
difficulty. Dalton's law of partial pressures gives us a great deal of latitude. And so uh, there is uh, look up. There's one mole of nitrous oxide for every one, two, three moles of gas. And so that means that's equal to one uh, uh, mole of R uh, into a, for every three moles of gas times uh, the pressure of the gas, which is 0 0.7389 atmospheres. And that is one third. So I can even, yeah, I could even solve this one if I wanted to. It's not that difficult. So I take on my scratch paper, I would go, okay, 0 0.7389 and divide by 3. And that's going to be 0 0.2, that's a 6, that gives uh, 13 remaining, which is going to be uh, 4, and that's going to uh, give me 12. With 18 remaining, that's going to be 6. That nothing remaining three. So it's equal to 0 0.2463 atmosphere. You don't have to do this last part. If you get it to this part, this far, I'm happy. This is answering the question. So we're really here to uh, uh, test your understanding of Dalton's law of partial pressures and the ideal gas law and simple stoichiometry. So that's